Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? It's Daryl D. Daryl D TV. Welcome back for another one. Check it out. Um, before I get started, just want to say that this episode has been sponsored by Crates Records and Gear, Sunny Slope AZ. If you're in the Phoenix metropolitan area, step on in there. Tell them Daryl D sent you. All right. All right. Let's keep it moving. I'm taking a little stroll here. The weather's finally warming up. I'm still out here in Michigan visiting family, you know, for a little while longer. And uh, finally outside again. So uh, check this out. I was on the internet earlier today and I came across this po post purely by accident. And apparently there is a Smoking Grooves concert going on in LA this weekend uh, tomorrow I think and now the smoking grooves for those that don't know was this tour that used to go on back in the mid 90s I don't know um, if it went further than that but I know 96 and 97 there were uh, uh, there were tours that that took place and they generally you know, uh, were rap and R&B artists, funk, um, that whole kind of thing. And so I was shocked when I, when I saw this post about the one in Los Angeles. Um, it's got a huge, huge uh, lineup, you know, a lot of neo soul, a lot of neo rap, you know, and with me being way out here in Michigan, apparently, gonna be able to make it unfortunately but just seeing that post kind of reminded me of uh, some of the shows I did back or went to back in the 90s I'd like to tell you about the 1996 show that came through Milwaukee Wisconsin um, this lineup consisted of let's see Ziggy Molly Busta Rhymes Tribe Called Quest, Cypress Hill, The Fugees, and Spearhead. Now, at the time, I had a public access show on uh, Channel 14 Matter in Milwaukee. And of course, um, I was trying to get as much footage as I could. It was called Daryl's DJ Spotlight. Um, a good homie of mine, rest in peace, Professor Pitt had a rap related show called Mental Fitness, Zon Another Level Pitt. And he he did a lot of hardcore interviews with you know rap acts that would come through town. Hold on a second. All right, sorry about that. I had to cross this busy street. Um, so Pitt and I, we used to try to get into as many shows as we could back in the day and get as much footage as we could for our shows. Now, one of the tactics that we used to use to get into shows when we didn't have, you know, official backstage passes or we didn't have access to the backstage of a lot of these shows. How you doing now? Was what we would do is we would get to the show real early. Like if the show started at eight o'clock, we'd be there like five, okay? So the security would be real light and not a lot of people there and we would pretty much just walk in there. That tactic still works today. Um, the last time I tried that actually was back in 2013. I did it again. Oh, LL Cool J tour. And then I did it again in like 2016, 2017 at another LL show. 
Well, I just walked backstage, you know, but that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother episode. Anyway, so this particular day, there was like maybe five or six of us and we all got there early. At the time, we were still using the equipment from the public access um, station. So there was a lot of equipment. So there was like two carloads full of us and we uh, we all rolled in there at like five o'clock and the security that was set up, we just rolled right past them. No problems, went right in. Now this was at a, the um, Marcus Amphitheater, uh, downtown Milwaukee, right along the lakefront on the state fairgrounds. So there's a, um, if you've ever been backstage at an amphitheater, the backstage a lot of times is outside. So we walked in the area where all of the tour buses were. Um, but when you go inside, there's like three floors. And the third floor is like the media area. So we all went up to the third floor, took all our uh, equipment up there and we're setting up the equipment and whatnot. So, myself and uh, another one of the homies, there was something that we had to put uh, or get from the car. So we had to walk a couple blocks to get to our vehicle to grab some more equipment. So, once we did that, we came back and we noticed that all of the homies you know, we're back downstairs. All of the equipment was back downstairs and all sitting outside, you know, all packed up. So we walk up and we're like, what happened? And uh, one of the homies was like, man, they kicked us out. We were all upstairs finishing the setup and this one security dude was like, who are you guys? What are you doing here? Where are your passes, you know, your press passes and all of that. I mean, we had our, you know, IDs from the uh, the uh, the studio or the the channel, the, the the public access channel, but we didn't have any real official, you know, backstage passes. So because we couldn't produce any passes, they kicked us out. So we're just sitting there. And we're waiting for uh, some of the homies to go pull the car cars back up so we can load all our equipment up and and leave. So it was over, it wasn't gonna work out at that point. So while we're standing there now, granted, all of the tour buses are there. They're already in there, and we see, you know, we catch glimpses of people. You know, um, Cypress Hill and uh, Cycle Realm, they were hanging out on the grass, you know, doing what they do, chilling. And um, I saw Five Dog come off of the, off of his uh, tour bus. And, you know, we would catch glimpses of people. And uh, all of a sudden, there's this one guy, he's affiliated with the tour somehow and he walks up to me and Pitt and he goes, yo, what's up? You know, our greetings and whatever. And uh, he thought, like, yo, what what's up with y'all, man? What, you know, what y'all doing here? What's the deal? And Pitt says, oh, man, you know, we're here from this station and we were supposed to do some interviews and uh, they kicked us out. And he was like, what? He's like, yeah, man. So. We just waiting to load all our equipment back up and uh, and leave. He was like, oh, word, okay, okay. So we see him walk off. He just kind of walks off and we look over in distance and we see Wyclef, you know, he's walking around. So the guy, he walks over to Wyclef and they start, you know, talking. They're, they're good ways away. We didn't, hear what they were saying or anything so they walk away well he they're talking I'm sorry 
And next thing you know, then Wyclef, he just walks off and disappears somewhere. So we're standing there. So I say about 10, 15 minutes go by. And then all of a sudden Wyclef reappears and he walks back over to this guy that we were talking to and they chatted up a little bit and then the guy walks back over to Pitt and myself and he hands us you know four tickets to the show you know and he says hey uh you know I got you guys some tickets he was like maybe you won't be able to interview anybody but at least you can stay for the show so we were like what he gave us six six tickets you know and we were like tripping right so by now all of this uh the people start rolling in more staff are um rolling in and it's getting a little busier, a little busier. And so the homies pull up in the vehicles, we load all the equipment in the vehicles, and then we they go and park it and we just chilling, right? So now we're kind of mingling in with the people that are backstage already. So it's getting closer and closer to showtime. And the next thing you know, boom, like, you know, the magic starts happening. And um, we did manage to get a few interviews in. One being uh, uh, Cypress Hill and Psycho Realm. And because it was public access, you know, my show was pretty, you know, PG-13. You know, it was, it was pretty pretty safe. But Pitt, Pitt is a madman. Pitt was a madman. I miss that brother so much. And his show was like no filter. So people would be on there, you know, he would tell people, hey, you can curse, you know, you can indulge in that, you know, all of that nonsense. So people was doing all kind of crazy stuff on camera. So you know how Cypress Hill is and you know how Psycho Realm is. So, you know, they were right at home and uh, they were doing, as a matter of fact, I have a, a episode of um, Pit Show, Mental Fitness, Zon Other Level Pit. I'll put a link in the description so you can check that out. And it's got a little clip of that uh, Psycho Realm, um, Cypress Hill interview. It's got a little clip, but if you watch that whole show, you'll see what I'm talking about. When I say pit show was absolutely insane. It was it was crazy. So they told us Cypress Hill, they told us after the interview was over that that was the best interview that they had ever done. Now obviously it was because they, you know, could do what they want. They could say whatever they wanted to and trust me when I say as crazy as Pitt was he encouraged as much craziness and insanity as he could. He, you know, that's what he lived for. He was a nut job himself. I love that brother. So um, we're making our way through other people. I'm trying to think of who else that we interview on that particular show. I remember running into Q-Tip backstage, like up on the second floor. He was by himself. I was by myself. And... He autographed uh, a record for me. And um, I remember when the Fugees were going on stage, a part of their show was um, Wy Wyclef had this, uh, I was hit some, hit some geese over here set tripping. I ain't got the right colors on. Um, so, Part of the show was he had this motorcycle helmet on and he was, uh, they were playing the the, uh, the theme song to Mission Impossible. Dun -dun -dun, dun -dun, uh, whatever that theme song is. Anyway, and he was like on this wire 
and they pulled him way up in the air and so when you know the curtains open up and they're playing his theme song and he comes down out the air like a spy or whatever it was it was dope it was it was a crazy crazy intro to their show and then he came out he did his thing pulled off the helmet everybody went crazy and then um uh Prize came out uh he did his thing i think he was like playing a keyboard or something at first and um then they were like oh who's missing is somebody missing blah 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 and then lauren starts singing from backstage and she comes out everybody went nuts i got to meet all of them and uh they autographed my uh score lp for me and i was just like wow i remember looking up i was on the ground floor and then lauren was uh standing up this is backstage i'm talking about lauren was standing up on the uh you know when uh, the uh, semis they back up and then it's like the concrete area is like real high so that they're level with uh you know if they have to unload something from their truck so she was standing up on that thing and i'm standing down on the ground so i had to look up at her and I just remember she was standing there and she was putting some lipstick on. And I was looking at her like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. And I was like, Lauren. And she was like, hey. And I was like, can you sign my record for me? And she was like, yeah, of course. And well, anyway, that's, never mind. So, um, back to Wyclef. So right before, right when all of this is going down with his intro, they're getting ready to pull him up on the string. And I knew that he was responsible for us even getting in there, you know? So I just kind of walked up to him and I was like, hey man, thank you for the passes and thank you and then blah, blah, blah. And he's kind of looking at me like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but you're welcome. I'm busy right now, you know, can you, you know? So I just, I got up out of there and, um, but yeah, man, I always wanted to thank him. I hope he sees this because, uh, you know, we were able to not only see the show, but we were able to get a few um, interviews in that uh, we were able to use. More so Pitt, because me and Pitt, we worked a lot together, and quite often, if it was uh, a DJ that I was interviewing, Pitt would run the camera for me, and vice versa. You know, if he was interviewing somebody, I was running the camera for him. And uh, a lot of the footage, if you look at the, uh, the episode of uh, his show that I have on his channel, a lot of those different clips is me, you know, running the camera for him. So anyway, um, yeah, Wyclef was mad cool for getting us into that show. And because of that, we were able to, you know, generate some incredible memories and some really cool footage. So peace and love to Wyclef. And, and the whole Fuji's crew and Cypress and Psycho Realm. I think Spearhead was on that show as well. And you know, Tribe and all of them. It was, it was just crazy to hang out with all of these people because I never thought that, um, you know, I was that kid back in the 80s that would go to these uh, concerts and you know, I would always want to meet these people you know that that I admire so much being the music lover that I am and I never thought that I would get as close to some, a lot of these people as I have over the years so you know that was just an incredible time in my life and this that kind of thing still happens to this day and anybody you know speaking of Wyclef anybody who's ever been to a Wyclef show knows that after every show, he goes right out into the audience and meets the fans. Every show, I've seen him probably four or five times, you know, over the years, and every time he's gone out into the crowd, out into the audience, and just sat down and just met everybody, you know, that wanted to meet him, sign autographs and all of that. So, big ups to Wyclef. So yeah, just seeing that post earlier about the Smoking Grooves tour, man, I wish I could go. It's gonna, this is gonna bother me for a while, but to those that are out in LA and they get to see that show, um, 
get at me let me know how it was you know what I mean and uh, maybe uh, I, I don't think it's a tour I think it's just that one date that's all I was able to find but hopefully maybe it'll turn back into a tour and uh, maybe I'll get to maybe we'll all get to see that you know those shows because I think the lineup on this one is crazy it's like and it's two days I believe or no two stages and there's probably like 30 or 40 acts on there I think I saw Roy Ayers and Erica Badu and Belial and, and there's a whole lot of acts on there like like I think it's like 30 40 acts on there but uh rapping in uh R&B, jazz, you know, it's a black thing. That's what's up. So anyway, um, yeah, I just had to reminisce about the Smoking Grooves tour. I think I did uh, a video about the Smoking Grooves tour, 1997. Um, I'll try to put that link in here too. I think that lineup consisted of George Clinton, Erica Badu, The Roots. Uh, Brand New Heavies, Foxy Brown, and one or two other acts on there. So you guys will have to check that out. All right. So, all right, cool. That's all for me right now. This is Daryl DTV. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. It's nice to be out in the nice weather again. I'll see you guys back in Phoenix pretty soon here. And uh, until next time, peace and love. Y'all be safe.